Auntie Rosa. Okay, we'll get started. Um, we usually start off with a, uh, well, welcome everybody uh, to our fifth Zoom session of, of uh, Filipino American History Month. Uh, we usually start off uh, traditionally with a moment of silence. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and think about those that cannot be with us, especially those who left the Philippines, who came to America, who put a roof over our heads, food in our stomachs, clothes on our back, and to provide us opportunities that were denied to them. Thank you. At this time, let me turn it over to our chap, the Fonz Hampton Roads chapter president, Ray Obispo. Ray, let's give a welcome, Ray. Hey, so I really want to uh, just say one thing that never in my life did I ever feel like I was going to uh, uh, be part of a meeting with uh, my, uh, my beautiful uncles and aunties in a Zoom. This is truly a very historical uh, event that we have here. Welcome everyone, especially for the aunties and uncles who are out there who are gonna be part of this uh, occasion. As you guys know, this is uh, Filipino American History Month and with Filipino American history, Fonz Hampton Rose has been sponsoring Fonz Now, which has been doing a lot of these uh, really great seminars uh, throughout the entire month of October, which is Filipino American History Month. And what other way to kind of round out uh, the entire month with our own history here in Hampton Roads, specifically with the Philippine Cultural Center, which many of you guys have been part of. So I just wanna say welcome, and I want you guys to uh, understand and, and know that this truly is another historical event when it comes to a Filipino American history, especially here in our area. So thank you guys so much. I'm gonna give, let's give everyone a big round of applause for being here. And also good to see a lot of familiar faces. Most of the time when we gather, we gather, um, you know, the cultural center, but with, uh, with the situation happening, this is the best we have. And I'm so glad that we're all here. So thank you guys very much. Alan, take it away. Okay. Now everybody should have a copy of this. Uh, if you registered, you, you, you got a copy of this outline, which would basically be the roadmap for this afternoon. Um, our chapter is now 30 years old, <laughs> believe it or not. And uh, some of the gifts that we're giving throughout the years would be like the Spawn's Legacy Month, which uh, 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 donates, I'm not, designates all the founders of, of, of Fonz and also Fonz Now, which is this uh, video conferencing program. Uh, we've uh, developed this so that we could start utilizing the type of technology to reach out. Um, throughout the years, uh, the Fonz Youth Summit in, in October um, 12th, 1997, we found that there, we had to be innovative as far as how do we teach high school kids or younger to be interested in the history. So we, we came up with the idea, okay, they would do like spoken word, uh, written uh, dramatization so that the history becomes alive, but they have to know the history to perform the history. So that became a good way to teach. Um, here's a copy of the uh, Virginia Beach Proclamation. And for those who are in cities that um, I encourage you, you could copy this and probably use it for next year or yeah, use it for next year. Now our third gift to everybody is this uh, Born of Empires Content Academy, which uh, we uh, provided two, two years ago. And uh, for all you aunties here, you see this blue colored stuff. This, uh, these are called hyperlinks. So what you, all you have to do is just click on here and you'll be able to, it'll, you'll come up with, with the link. And this is the Content Academy. Um, so when you look at this, you'll see all this listing here on the left Everything you want to know about Philippines or the Filipinos or Filipino marriage is an extensive uh, a list of resources for you to, to learn, um, learn, about, learn about our people. So we're proud of that. 
um, membership. Uh, you click on that. Hopefully, um, if you want to join Fawns Hampton Roads, um, just click on here and just uh, join. Uh, I assure you, uh, we're probably like one of the not only the one of the oldest running organizations, but we're probably one of, one of the most lively organization <laughs> chapters uh, on in Fawns. Um, now for the rest of the month, well, these are the programs that we've done before uh, on starting in October 1st. What we've done is that uh, you will have a, a, a copy of the presentation outline and also the recording. So you'll be able to go back and see what you missed or, or, or haven't seen. Um, when we go through, see we're here now uh, on the 27th. Well, this week's a big week for us because we are doing a Zoom session every other day. So uh, it's, we're gonna finish strong. Um, today it's the uh, PCC. Two days it's uh, when Virginia wasn't for lovers. And on the 29th, uh, we fought for freedom. It's, it's, about, it's about Philippine American veterans. And um, on the 31st, we decided to, uh, to um, well, Auntie Dorothy did a session on We Are Fonts, and that was our longest Zoom session ever. It was about three hours, but she had more to say. So we decided to change the 31st program to Fonts 40th and Beyond. That's just the title that I just came up with, and it's, and it's to describe the 40th anniversary of Fonts, which would be held at the conference in Seattle. So in this session here, Auntie Dorothy is going to articulate, you know, what she would like to see uh, in that uh, conference, and you know that's probably going to be her last, her swan song. So hope you be able to uh, attend that. Now the historical background for Hampton Roads, Virginia, which is uh, for those on the West Coast, uh, this is. Uh, the largest concentration of Filipinos on the East Coast. And here's, you'll be able to click on and, and here's some information. But today uh, we are delighted to have um, the uh, chairman of the, uh, of the, of the uh, Council of, of United Filipino Americans, uh, Dr. Cindy Romero, this is her bio here. And she's gonna present um, the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia, 20 years of activism because 20 years ago, that's when the uh, Cultural Center opened up. So without further ado, uh, Dr. Sin, you could take over now. Just Alan, give thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Alan, to you um, and all of FONS across the country. Thank you so much for celebrating our um, History Month in such a special way and including us to be part of this year's activities. Um, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of the building of our Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia, which has been owned and operated by the Council of United Filipino Organizations of Tidewater. So if I may start with a very quick commercial break uh, with our first vice chairman, Dr. Arlene Fontaneras. Thanks, and hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for this very special event. Um, as she said, it's incredible that we're celebrating the 20th year of the opening of our Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. Although we've been limited in our ability to gather for this momentous celebration, we do so very appreciate this opportunity to share our history with you, and we thank you all for your support. The PCC just opened an online store, and we are excited to have available commemorative t-shirts, both in adult and children's sizes, face masks, and a very special limited edition. It's a beautiful souvenir coin with our official 20th year anniversary logo. You can purchase our items online from PCC Market at pccva.org slash shop. You can pay by credit card or PayPal. And if you're local in the Hampton Roads area, you can choose the option for local pickup and we're happy to deliver the items to you to save on shipping costs. I will post the address in the chat box so you can peek in and shop, start your Christmas shopping early. Um, and all our proceeds of course from the sales will benefit the Philippine Cultural Center. So salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you again for your patronage and do enjoy our presentation this afternoon. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Arlene. 
And now we will let me share my screen so we can open the presentation. And just want to make sure I hear from all of you that you can see this. OK, thumbs up. Fantastic. So again, thank you so much for this incredible opportunity to share the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia part one as part of this History Month celebrating Filipino American activism. Again, just to clarify, uh, although we are celebrating our 20th anniversary of having our building, our beloved Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia, what I am referencing is going to be the first 20 plus years before the building was constructed to give you the sense of the amazing activism, pioneer work, and tireless effort that took place to result in our beautiful center. So just a disclaimer that this information is simply being shared on behalf of my personal reflections and my perspective based on my own lived experience, but also from various summaries from different people, different formats that are in books, as well as some souvenir programs and other newsletters and written documents. So again, these are my personal reflections that are built on several different pieces of information. These specific pieces of information, pictures and narratives were again gathered from many of the individuals who are on this call. So I want to thank my God sisters, my matron of honor, many of my ninongs, ninangs, aunties, uncles. Thank you for your support. But in addition to what I would like to share as reflected in these slides and pictures and pieces of information, please know that I fully recognize that there are countless, countless other voices and perspectives that need to be gathered, that need to be told, and that need to be preserved. So for those on this um, webinar, particularly in our region, and those who we are still in touch with, I'm making the plea that we need to capture more of your stories since your story contribute and make up our story. And for those across the West Coast and across the country, we certainly appreciate your effort in being examples for us in creative ways on how we can continue to gather and document our history. So again, thank you. The objectives in the next few minutes are to really present some acts of Filipino American activism, pioneerism, leadership right here in our region, the Eastern region known as Hampton Roads. We're gonna discuss the formation of our Council of United Filipino Organizations of Tidewater or CUFOT in unifying Filipino Americans. We're gonna highlight the vision and community support to build the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. We're gonna review the property identification and acquisition and other related processes related to the building. We're gonna share the diverse fundraising efforts, discuss the formation of the critical board of trustees, celebrate the construction and inauguration of the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia, and also touch on and review some of the unique challenges to building the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. So just as a reminder, um, also as I've listened to a couple of other FONS presentations, we are very much based on the history of the Immigration Act in 1962, where there was a surge of Filipino immigrants to the United States. This was the fourth wave of immigration. And this particular wave was focused on recruiting professionals, and military members. And since there are many military bases in Hampton Roads, again, from all the different branches of the military, we were fortunate in that many of the Filipinos decided to settle their families here. Small groups, regional clubs, professional organizations were born as a result of those networks. And the first Filipino American organization to be established was the Filipino Women's Club of Tidewater, which was established in 1964. So the formation of CUFOT. Mario Gamboa, who at the time was in the US Navy, was the president of the Batangas Association of Tidewater. And Corinne Padilla, who was the president of the Filipino Women's Club of Tidewater at the time, began noticing the multiple Filipino American organizations, and they began discussing the need to unify the Filipinos. They began to gather leaders from several of those Filipino American organizations at the wheelhouse meeting place on the Naval Amphibious Base Little Creek, 
And the reason was because that was a large enough space to accommodate a group and it was available at a nominal fee, especially for those military members um, who were part of our community. And they began to discuss the importance of creating an umbrella organization to facilitate communication and coordinate activities between these Filipino American organizations. So on January 16, 1976, organizational presidents met at this meeting house at the Little Creek Amphibious Base and adopted the name Council of United Filipino Organizations of Tidewater Virginia Incorporated, or for short, CUFOT. The presiding officer during that meeting and over the elections was Dr. Norma Mampok, who then was the president of the Bataan Association. The individuals who were elected to office at that meeting included the following, as you see, Chairman Dr. Manuel Hippel, who was then president of the United Ilocano Association of Tidewater, Vice Chairman Lieutenant Colonel Leon Puncelon, who is in the US Army and also the president or representative of the Pampango Language Club, Treasurer Mario Gamboa in the Navy and president of the Batangas Association of Tidewater, Secretary Mrs. Sally Marcial, nurse, president of the Filipino Women's Club of Tidewater and auditor Jess Quirimit, um, MSC, US Navy, also a member of the Pampango Language Club. They were later inducted by Consul General Leonidas Kadai, who was part of the Philippine Embassy in Washington, DC. KUFOT as an organization began to develop as well as provide all the documentation that they needed to truly be an approved organization at all levels. So the constitution and bylaws were adopted in 1976 during the first term of the chairman, Dr. Manuel Hippel. It, CUFOT was incorporated under the laws of the Commonwealth of Virginia in 1979 during the second term of Dr. Hippel. CUFOT was granted its 501c3 tax exempt status, oh, granted there twice, sorry, uh, by the IRS in 1982 during the term of Mr. Chris Romero as chairman. And Kufat was granted real estate and property tax exempt, exemption status in 1994 with the help of state delegate Frank Wagner and his legal aide at the time, Ron Villanueva. Kufat developed a logo that had such significant meaning and we are grateful for all the contributors of the elements of the logo, which I will now review. And we are also grateful for the artistic talents of Joey Boho, the son of Rudy and Carmen Boho, um, who had very, very good artistic skills at the time and was able to pull the information that all the Kufat leaders wanted into the logo that you see today. So I'll describe to you very briefly why the logo is as it is and the symbolic meanings of each of the components. First, the United States of America and the Philippine flags. It represents the two countries of domiciles. The US flag represents the country where the Filipino Americans reside and adopted as the country in which they live and raise their children. The Philippine flag represents their motherland where their rich culture and family value have originated. The map of Virginia with the asterisk right there the Filipino Americans residing in the Tidewater area, which is now known as Hampton Roads, and it's the place where Kufat was formed and founded. The firm hand clasp in the middle, one arm wearing a traditional white shirt and the other in the Filipino Barong Tagalog. It symbolizes friendship and cohesiveness among Filipinos and Americans in the local community, state, and throughout the country. It represents the tenacity and resolve of the founders, leaders, officers, and of the 32 loan guarantors and countless volunteers mutually agreeing to build a magnificent facility known as the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. It is a Mecca for everyone to meet, socialize, educate, and perform various cultural activities. January 16th, 1976, the birth of the Council of United Filipino Organizations of Tidewater, Virginia Incorporated, also known as CUFOT. The Sampaguita flower, 
on both sides. The national flower of the Philippines that symbolizes peace and purity. Mythology and folklore in the Philippines have the words Sumpa Kita, meaning I swear, from which evolved Sampagita. Sumpa Kita signifies an everlasting love between two lovers caught in a dispute of their Datu fathers who are chieftains of their own tribes. <clears throat> Notably, peace and unity among the council members continue to evolve in an unprecedented progress. The Philippine Eagle, right here is his head and the wings. The national bird of the Philippines and declared as a national emblem in 1995. It stands for freedom and liberty. The eagle carries the Kufat seal and soars to unreachable heights and immeasurable success. The six tail feathers, uh, three on each side of the head and beak of the eagle represent the founding organizations of the council. They were the Filipino Women's Club of Tidewater, FWCT, United Ilocano Association of Tidewater, UIAT, Batangas Association of Tidewater, Seafarers, which later became known as the Filipino American Veterans of Hampton Roads, the Bataan Association, and Pampango Language Club. The nine stars represent the nine member organizations that, con that conceived the seal of Kufat, and then the three organizations that joined the founding organizations include Zambalas Association, Cavite Association, and Samahang Tagalog. And then the manila rope that encompasses the seal. The rope is made of hard leaf fiber from the tropical plant abaca in the Philippines. It is the strongest of all natural fibers and signifies the strength and unity among the member organizations of the council. Thank you so much for allowing me to walk through that with you. And now the vision, the dream, the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. As Kufat's first chairman, Dr. Manuel Hippel, envisioned the building of the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia, that magnificent place for Filipino families to gather, socialize, and support each other, as well as to preserve the culture, traditions, and values of the Philippines for the future generations through the education of the youth. There was a focus on building the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia, which resulted in a unifying effort culturally and financially, and recognizing that this vision, this dream began to galvanize, stimulate and motivate the entire community to gain its support and commitment to drive to that eventual reality. Unity through culture, again, a sign of true activism. During the first term, or the term of Mario Gamboa as chairman in 1977, he started the annual Philippine Independence Day with the solemn wreath laying at MacArthur Memorial and flag raising in the, in the downtown city of Norfolk area. Featured within these pictures include several of our chairmen as well as their wives and the reigning misses and other queens at the time. So again, this is one of the premier celebrations that Kufat started, started. in its early route phases in 1977, which in our opinion was demonstrating activism, pioneerism, but also preservation of our culture through these special activities. And as we know, uh, General Douglas MacArthur was a significant friend of the Filipino community. And we are, we are grateful that we have his memorial right here within our region. Other pictures that demonstrate our unity through culture, starting with our Philippine Independence Day, this was all taking place in the city of Norfolk before we had our beloved PCC. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but this in particular is uh, Mrs. Rose Daria, who I know is on the call, and others who were on the outside steps of the MacArthur Memorial preparing for the wreath lane. And here depicted, are individuals raising the flag. This is the, Ameri or the Philippine flag. And then the other pole had the American flag. Again, big activity and effort to recognize our dual uh, country loyalties. And here in this picture, as referenced earlier, is 
former chairman Mario Gamboa, as well as Mrs. Lilia Paraz, who was the first Mrs. Philippines of Virginia, as well as um, this is Alan Fontaneras, uh, one of our um, youth, and Jane Mumpok, who was our first Little Miss Philippines, several aunties, and then Ninang Nelly Dabu. Unity through culture. Our leaders recognized the importance of being part of our community, which also led to the importance of having relationships with our elected officials at all levels, from the Embassy of the Republic of the Philippines in, in the United States, which happens to only be about four hours away from our region in Washington, DC, having relationships with US congressmen and senators, Virginia state delegates and senators, and local officials, including our mayor, city council, school, bo school board members, et cetera. So again, featured here are pictures of several of our former chairmen who are there with several of the ambassadors from the US uh, embassy office of our um, Republic of the Philippines, as well as, so this one is the, uh, Honorable uh, Eduardo Romualdez with um, several of our former chairmen, including uh, Vera Madera and Mr. Chris Romero. This is uh, Congressman uh, Whitehurst uh, and with uh, very dedicated leaders, including Ben and Lita Sisson. We have former chairman uh, Dick Dabu with the state delegate at the time, Frank Wagner, Bob Tata and Sal. Salvador. And then here is a picture with our very beloved mayor, longstanding member, uh, Mayor Myra Obendorf, again with several of the youth from the, uh, the Kufot uh, dance troupe. And knowing that those relationships were critical at every event possible, we have invited those representatives to come join us for various events, which led to Again, this is a, a more current picture from the Sister Cities activity uh, related to the, uh, the firemen training. This is um, a former uh, ambassador as well. Uh, that was, let me just make sure I pronounce Ernesto, Honorable Ernesto Maceda with um, Chairman uh, Dr. <laughs> Hippel and Mrs. Hippel. And then the um, the other Philippine embassy representatives, again, we see uh, Chairman Dick Dabu and even his wife, Nelly Dabu, and uh, Uncle Sid Devera with representatives there, and of course with Myra Obendors. And then we are grateful that we had an opportunity to bring Imelda Marcos to the Philippine Cultural Center uh, building that was initially a small ranch house uh, during our first groundbreaking event on August 21st, 1983. So there we have several of, of our representatives, again, um, Dick Dabu, um, Joan Mallon, Dr. Hippel, Nelly Dabu with our first former first lady of the Philippines, Imelda Marcos, and then the Barrera Sid and Ulfi, uh, Yvonne Briotti, um, and other, my brother, and there's first lady. So again, what an opportunity for us Again, there's Karine Fadella to be in the presence and have the connection with Amelda Marcos when she was in town. Unity through culture. Appreciating that military pride is a significant part of our culture, especially here in Hampton Roads. We are grateful that since 1978, when Chris Romero was president of the Filipino American Veterans of Hampton Roads, Phil M. Vets have been part of the local Filipino or the local Veterans Day parade. So we have a picture from one of the first parades that the Phil and Vets were invited to, Lita Sisson, Marites Boho, and several members of our community, including the little kids. Then this is a more recent photo from 1996, where again, our Phil and Vets were part of the parade. And then right there, you see them um, solemnly displaying our flags, the American flag, City of Virginia Beach, and the American or the Philippine flag on the boardwalk of Virginia Beach. Unity through culture, preserving our culture through our youth. I wanna acknowledge 
Rose Daria, who led this effort with many, many other aunties. But you'll see here, some of the efforts included a cultural night, bringing children in particular together. You'll see lots of um, children from the Hippo family, the Yudo family, um, um, Akinte, lots of uh, families there that you'll see Kakaninden. Um, this is the United Ilocano Association of Tidewater Youth Group. This is the FWCT Youth Group, lots of families there. The Batangas Association of Hampton Roads Youth Group, and this was representing uh, the Philippines at the Azalea Festival on the ocean front. This is the Kufant Youth Group, um, very long ago in the 1970s, and this is at the Botanical Gardens. And then a uh, part of the relationship we had with the Virginia uh, Ballet in Norfolk. And again, unity through culture, emphasizing education through youth and our establishment of the youth division. Special, special thanks to all of the aunties, all of the aunties, again, many of whom are on this call, particularly um, Ninang Rose Daria, who is the founding director of the School of Creative and Performing Arts established in 2000. And that was under the leadership again with uh, Dr. Hippel providing that support. And even though the School of Creative and Performing Arts, SCAPA was established in 2000, Rose Daria led the engagement of youth in cultural activities since 1976. And there are countless, countless, emphasize countless aunties who must be remembered and appreciated for sharing their talents, teaching dances, making costumes, finding music, music and accompaniments. And again, countless aunties, Auntie Luz Talentina, Tona, uh, Luz Talentino, Imelda Texon, Jessica Bello, Lita Sisson, um, Auntie Belly Guerrero, countless, countless aunties who spent hours patiently teaching us to sway balance and to bend our bodies and to extend and to know how to balance our, the glasses on our head. Thank you, thank you to our aunties, titas, ninangs. Unity through cultural and fundraising activities. Our annual Mrs. Philippines of Virginia Popularity Contest began in 1978 during the second term of Dr. Hippel as a primary fundraiser for the PCC. Mrs. Lilia Perez was crowned as first Mrs. Philippines of Virginia. There's a picture of her and others. This is another picture, again, depiction of the Mrs. Philippines pageantry. Mrs. This was a picture from Mrs. Nelly Dabu's coronation in 1979. And here on the wall of our current PCC, again, each of our Mrs. Philippines and court have their pictures and each of them have their stories. Each of them have their successes that we wanna to continue to capture and enjoy because it is through their effort that we probably raised approximately 250,000 from 1978 until uh, 1990. And the reason why I said approximately is because we are still in the process of documenting since we didn't have computers, um, what, the e uh, what the amounts were of each of those campaigns. But we know with significant contributions of the Mrs. Philippines, that helped us you know, be able to function to lead to the building of the Cultural Center as we see today. We have documentation starting from 1991, our, our uh, current treasurer and longstanding treasurer, Rosa Blanca was able to calculate that we have gathered from the Mrs. Philippines campaign from 1991 to the present, over $569,000. So I can truly say with confidence that the Mrs. Philippines of Virginia pageant has itself contributed probably close to a quarter of a million dollars leading to the building of our Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. Unity through culture and fundraising. Other organizations started pageants to highlight the beauty of the Filipina and to engage the community in fundraising. <laughs> so you will see here, again, Dr. Fontanera says Miss Ilocandia in 1981 and the, the joy of being part of various parades in the region where we got a chance to sit on uh, various uh, vehicles. There's Mrs. Joan Mallon, who was the reigning Mrs. Philippines at the time. Here's a picture with our mayor, Sid Barrera and others, Carmen uh, Uden or Tiergart and um, others of the reigning misses at the time of multiple, 
multiple uh, pageants. And you'll see here members of the Philam Vets, others, Mr. George Daria, and others that are right here demonstrating the support and the gathering of our, um, of our community through fundraising and showcasing our pageantry. And here are pictures of our Miss Philippines of Virginia, which again was a significant fundraiser for PCC that was facilitated and led by the Filipino Women's Club of Tidewater. This is a, a copy of a letter that was comprised of the solicitation language that was used as part of the solicitation for the uh, Mrs. Philippines contest. And it was sent out on behalf of CUFOT Board of Directors. And what I found interesting is how there is a significant focus on the Mrs. Philippines contest, which has be, at that point had become the most significant resource to visibility of the attainment of the cultural center dream through its generated fund was has made possible made po the possible the acquisition of 2.3 acres of land and a building situated on Baxter Road in the city of Virginia Beach this is the site of the future Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia and to see that this is a letter that was used consistently to garner support for the Mrs. Philippines contest Organizational, organizational donations began and contributed to the Dollar a Brick campaign. And throughout each year, the Kufat member organizations would host various events and fundraisers with the proceeds leading to the donations for the building of the cultural center. And this is a picture depicting, depicting several of our women who were pillars of not just the Filipino Women's Club of Tidewater, but of our Filipino community. And in particular, Sal Montilla, again, Mrs. Philippines of 1983, and then the three Manangs, um, Mrs. Labrador, Mrs. Baltazar, Mrs. Lazo. And to know that these women, these women were the heart and soul of our community and galvanizing, unifying the Filipina women across the community. Again, countless, countless other women, aunties, titas, ninangs that were part of this amazing network of strong women who made our community, who made the fundraisers, who made the PCC possible. Organizational donations. This is a time in 1999 where we were still in the old Baxter Road place. So you'll see that this is a, um, the uh, board that was asking for and tracking donations. And again, the Mrs. Philippines and Court Society, Samahang Tagalog, the Kufat officers and the UIAT, United Ilocano Association of Tidewater, providing their donations. Other fundraising projects to support the PCC. 1980, the Little Miss Philippines pageant began under the Filipino American Veterans of Hampton Roads by Dr. Oleli Romero. Jennifer Mugpuk was the first to be crowned. In 1989, the Magic 10 Pledge Plan, a pyramid type of donor plan, was started by the fundraising chairman, uh, Karing Padilla, uh, during also her term as Kufat chairman. In 1998, there were other campaigns, strategies, methods that were used for fundraising a campaign 500 led by Dr. Romero, the Millennium Tree with various levels of contributions and donations that were led by uh, Venus Tamanning and Dr. Rose de Vera Hippo. And then Checkomatic donations that were uh, ways that certain amounts could be deducted from uh, a checking account and donated to the, um, the Kufat checking account. And I just thought it was funny, Checkomatic. Uh, that was the term back then. And again, just a little bit of documentation from the Magic 10 concept, you know, identifying 10 organizations with 10 leaders each to engage 10 families and to commit to $10 uh, donation to the Kufat per month and resulting in a certain amount. And this is again, a documentation of the fundraising committee and the structure and seeing all the individuals who were involved and seeing the, the the deliberate and strategic process of having uh, donations solicited. Other fundraising projects, 
included golf tournaments that were sponsored by and hosted by the Philippine American Golf Association. There were home mahjong, poker, bingo, Pakino sessions that were held throughout the years, but certainly during the specific pageant campaigns. There were raffles for cash and other desirable items, and many organizational dances were held for various holidays, religious feast days, and other special occasions just because with the proceeds going to PCC. Now, focus on our property. Karing Padilla, who was a real estate professional, identified several properties throughout Hampton Roads that could serve as a potential site for the PCC. She invited several Kufat leaders to visit locations in Chesapeake, Norfolk, Portsmouth, Suffolk, and Virginia Beach. Properties varied in size with the goal of being uh, less than five acres with the various layouts that were in different shapes and various different stages of development. Some were wooded, some were farmland, some were new to be developed and others were already occupied and developed. Eventually they settled on the Baxter Road property due to the central location, especially because of the higher concentrations of Filipinos in Virginia Beach and Norfolk, as well as because of the adjacent properties that were of interest for potential expansion. Land acquisitions for the PCC. There were, it was comprised of three purchases of various land parcels that you see before you. The first lot, parcel number one, was 1.3 acres, which was purchased by Kufa in 1979 for a price of $75,000. The Philippine Cultural Center sign was immediately nailed to the front of the building, depicting that that was the site for the future PCC. Lot number two was a one acre lot that was purchased in 1984 cash. And that was for $46,000. Again, it was bought with cash that was raised by the Mrs. Philippines in court of 1983 with Mrs. Philippines of Virginia, Sal Montilla, Mrs. John Mila Palalai, and Mrs. Visayas Meli Aguirre. And then lot number three was a half acre uh, lot that was purchased in 1991 by Kufat for $83,000. And of note, the Hippel and Dabu families subsidized these par this parcel initially because when this particular lot was put on the market for sale, the Hippel and Dabu families saw that as an opportunity to uh, purchase the property since Kufat was not in a position to uh, purchase it at the time. So that the Hippel and Dabu families were able to um, purchase the property, pay for it until Kufat was ready to buy it, and again, in 1991, Kufat was able to purchase it at the original price, not including the taxes that were paid, taxes and interest. And that led us to um, additional information that needed to be done for the property. So in, okay, I apologize. I, I, these, uh, these slides were uh, in different order. Let, let me, if I may, very quickly go to um, this slide. So in 1985, um, Chairman Dabu wa was president of the president of the Pampango Language Club, and then he became chairman of Kufat. Uh, Karing was able to do the legwork to apply for and follow up on the building permit, the site plan and rezoning requirements. In 1989, um, as fundraising chairman, she actually then became the first woman Kufat chairman um, building upon her efforts as fundraising committee chair. In 1991, during uh, Conrado Dabu's second term as chairman, the 2.8 acre property was rezoned as O2 commercial office space. And then in 1993, the site plan, the building permit and other documents were completed. So in summary, the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia property included the, um, the full um, contingent of the 2.3 acres with the full address of 4857 Baxter Road, Virginia Beach. And as of June, 1993, the assessed value was $1.2 million. As of 2020, the city assessed value is $2.66 million. In, with the excitement of all that progress with the building, there was a groundbreaking, um, event on August 21st, 1993. And just like the saying, we had the event and all we have is 
to remember it is this t-shirt. Uh, this is a, actually a sample of the t-shirt from that groundbreaking day. And it was actually a pretty lavish event. Uh, that was when the uh, First Lady of the Philippines was able to come. There was a time capsule that was uh, buried under one of the foundations. Um, and this is the opportunity where I see us having more complete and comprehensive pictures to document all those activities. Yet, when we look at the status, again, this is a report, a treasurer's report from our very own uh, Rosa Blanco from even 1996 during one of the board meetings. Um, you'll notice that this is 20 years after the establishment of KUFOT and the building fund at the time had a balance of $12,225.85. And even with the excitement of the groundbreaking in uh, 1993, there still was not enough for us to um, start the building and the construction. This is one of the proposals uh, to build a building of the size that we wanted, again, approximately 11,000 square feet to be able to accommodate theater seating and um, tables. And the estimated cost, again, from this one proposal was over a million dollars. So the status updates were provided to all the organizations through the board of director meetings of council, of the council, as well as through the various meetings of the organizations. So determined to do all that was needed to attain the dream of the PCC, Chairman Dabu, Hippel, Padilla, and Romero encouraged every KUFOT leader, every KUFOT organization, every KUFOT friend to continue to think of more ways to fundraise. A PCC building committee met regularly with all the current and former KUFOT chairmen, leaders, and guests from the community, including architects, contractors, engineers. And again, each organizational meeting of KUFOT as well as KUFOT member organizations included discussion on fundraising for PCC. Formation of the Board of Trustees. This is a critical effort that was led by uh, Dr. Rose Devera Hippel and in partnership with her brother, Sid Devera and with the help of attorney John Greenside with a major concern of who would finance the construction of PCC of Virginia and because of the significant desire and drive to want to have that dream be a reality. They looked at several banking institutions and realized that it would require multiple families who would be willing to sign as guarantors for a construction loan that would help support an almost a million dollar um, venture. The first appeal was not successful, but persistence because of Dr. Rose de Vera Hippo, oh, I apologize, Doug, I, misspelled Dr. Devera Hipple's um, last name there, um, Sid Devera and Attorney John Greenside, where they met with individual families, reviewed information, and then convened a meeting on October 1st, 1997, with a bank officer from the Bank of the Commonwealth, meeting with several families at the Hipple residence, reviewed the process of financially vetting each responsibility, or vetting each family, and reviewing the responsibilities of guarantors that would require them to pay the mortgage in the event of a financial shortfall. Dr. Hippel continued to um, facilitate that meeting. And on that same night, nine families already committed to serve as guarantors. Within a week, another two families stepped up. And then in total, 32 families signed on as guarantors. And these represented grassroots families from across the community, including the retired military, proud housewives, and other professionals. And they eventually became recognized as the Philippine Cultural Center Board of Trustees. We want to take special time to recognize them because of the significant work that they did. They, put, they in particular, put their family's financial interests, their financial um, concerns on the line in order to support and to commit to the building of the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. And again, the families of the Abrigos, Aquintes, Areza, Baltazar, Barrera, Blanco, Bugante, Calpito, Connor, Constante, Corsino, Dabu, Dejon, Daria, Esteban, Federico, Fermin, Flores, Fontaneras, Guerrero, Hippel, Lazo, Medrano, and Pablo. And then Padilla, Pelosa, Ravago, Reyes, Rivera, Romero, Tantino, and Tamani. These were the leaders, but 
I would say in addition, they stimulated the interest of others to want to step up and help. But again, if it were not for the true sacrifice of these families to back that construction loan of almost a million dollars, truly the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia might not have been built. So with that excitement, the, the thrill of being able to host a groundbreaking session number two on March 8th, 1999, led to the gathering of local officials, all the former chairmen, all the leaders to uh, have that first groundbreaking and to really see that this dream was starting to become a reality. Again, just more pictures from that day with our mayor and so many other of our leaders. And again, we want to acknowledge that without the work of con uh, all of our chairmen, especially Hippel, Dabu, Padilla, Romero, Devera, we would not be here today. To see that beginning sign, sign of saying the future home of the Philippine Cultures of, of Virginia, having the permits that needed to be done, and then being able to see every phase along the way that this was a reality. Again, this is only a simple snapshot in the amazing effort of a community that came around the dream of wanting to see this place, this opportunity built. And as we saw this, the phases and seeing the stages of the PCC really starting to come together brick by brick, cement by cement, just a remarkable effort where clearly, even though the bricks and mortar were put into place with each brick, with each piece of mortar, with each garnet, with each piece of rubble, with each element of sand, I would say reflects an hour, a person, a family that put significant time and energy into all of the fundraising efforts that were outlined. Many of the people on this call work tirelessly throughout each day, throughout each week, each weekend to prepare for every event and to prepare for gathering enough finances to see this structure come to reality. So again, each step along the way represents the hard work, commitment, pioneer, activism, leadership of so many. And then it became a reality. We were able to see the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia in its beauty, in bricks and mortar, tangible, a tangible result of a dream becoming a reality. We had the inauguration on June 24, 2000 with many, many of our dignitaries, many of our leaders within our Filipino community and beyond present to celebrate and to open our doors to our special place, our special hub, our magnificent, magnificent center. Again, countless, countless leaders, volunteers, blood, sweat, tears, commitment, perseverance, beyond challenges. When we look at even just a snapshot of some achievements of PCC, preserving our culture through Scapa, Priva, Kuntao, all of our pageants, all our religious activities, through San Lorenzo celebrations, Holy Mary, Mother of God, Our Lady of Namakpakan, Samhang Tagalog, our salute to the graduates supporting our value of Filipinos in excellence in education, promoting charitable endeavors, fundraising natural disaster or fundraising for natural disasters, especially in the Philippines, serving our community through out, consular outreach of the Philippine Embassy, starting wealth or wellness and fitness activities, including health fairs with the Filipino Alliance and countless, countless other activities. And again, behind every activity, you will find aunties and uncles, children, spending hours planning, practicing, implementing, cleanup, and then planning the next event. And when we look at the successes, we also want to acknowledge the challenges. We know that early on, especially back when the, the council was started, that there were unbelievers. There were people who would not believe because it was such a daunting task. And we understand that this was not for everyone, but we recognize that as a challenge. We also see that through the, through the years, 
where there were relationship changes based on leadership of various organization, leadership changes, relationship changes because of you know, interpersonal interactions, because of political um, dynamics. So that was a challenge. There was a challenge because of the incredible investment and the need for volunteer work. No one was getting paid to do this work. Countless, countless hours of tireless volunteer work. That was a challenge, knowing that there were several who bore a lot of that burden because of the commitment and dedication they have, spending hours at the, at, the, at the site, spending hours at the old building just to make sure things were prepared. Tireless, tireless volunteer work. Residential to uh, commercial zoning, if that were not to happen, we would not be able to build a commercial building. Planning the fundraisers to prevent financial shortfall for mortgage payments and for the building maintenance. Again, huge number of challenges. But I also want to very quickly point out two in particular special miracles of San Lorenzo that have occurred at PCC. As many of you know, San, Lore San Lorenzo Ruiz de Manila was our first Filipino saint who was canonized by St. John, uh, John Paul II on October 18th, 1987. In October, 1987, Dr. Manuel Hippel bought a statue uh, and brought it from um, uh, Hackensack, New Jersey of San Lorenzo from Reverend Advincula Diaz and brought it here to PCC, which was the beginning of the annual novena celebration and devotion to San Lorenzo Ruiz de Manila. And interesting, um, during the transaction for the second parcel acquisition, there was a scenario where the, the uh, owner of the property lived in Florida. A check for the amount of $46,000 was sent to that property owner she cashed it. And then when we were trying to go through the process of acquiring the property, there was question whether or not that, that financial transaction took place. So we needed a copy of that canceled check. And at the time um, in, in the banking industry, canceled checks were actually mailed back to the people who wrote the check. So that canceled check was sent back to uh, the PCC um, at the time. And there was a, a, a frantic search for that cancel check to document that transaction. And so everyone was praying to San Lorenzo to find that check. And wouldn't you know, in the storage unit next to our property uh, was the San Lorenzo material and a specific cloth. And under, under that cloth was that canceled check. And that was found by Nelly Dabu, Sid Barrera, and the treasurer at the time, Pete Areza. So again, Prayers to San Lorenzo, a miracle. And then another miracle was as, as everyone was preparing for the opening of the PCC in June, everyone was praying for a successful opening. Days before the opening, there was flooding at the PCC and we prayed for San Lorenzo to find the source of it and why. And fortunately, it was found very quickly that there were line connections that were faulty that was fixed right away. And again, the opening of the PCC went as planned. So again, thank you, San Lorenzo, continue to pray for us. And I will conclude with this. I know we are um, wrapping up quickly. Activists, leaders, and legends. I mentioned by name only a few, but I will say special recognition in particular needs to be paid to those who volunteered and sacrificed time and energy as chairman. Okay, and again, Dr. Manuel Hippel, longest standing chairman in the history of the council. Mario Gamboa, Chris Romero, Veer Madera, Dick Dabu, the second longest serving chairman of our council, and Karing Padilla, first woman chairman. And I want to spend a moment to celebrate them as activists, as leaders, and as our legends. Because of them, their spouses, their families, their friends, and their community were truly motivated to help pursue all that was needed, pragmatically, logistically, business-wise, to have the center erected, constructed the way it was. In addition, activists, leaders, and legends have to be given to those who served as the executive presidents, who were elected particularly to serve over the management of 
the building. Dr. Lely Romero, Sid Barrera, Venus Tamanning, and George Daria. Again, these are only you know, a sample of those who spent hours, hours, countless hours, days, nights within the old building and within the Philippine Cultural Center to make sure that everything was in place for successful events and also to fundraise and do what needed to be done for our PCC. So again, I would say activism in Hampton Roads. Activism is demonstrated through the people, the activists, leaders, and legends who were part of this effort from even the beginning of the Filipino Women's Club of Tidewater and the formation of KUFOT. So I will say we need to recognize everyone, KUFOT officers, board members through the years, all organizational presidents, officers, board, boards and board members and regular members of the organizations, all the volunteers, all donors, especially those who contribute to the $1 per raffle ticket for cash prizes like a $500 prize, all supporters, everyone who helped foster the growth and cooperation of this effort. And this includes non kufat members, all of our restaurants, our marketplaces, all of our Filipino businesses, they helped us become a reality. So again, we wanna thank them and recognize them as true activists. I wanna read something that was a, um, um, a, a poem that was found in several of the, bi of the binders of our documents of Kufat. And I wanna say this is a reflection of the heart of our PCC pioneers. And let me read this to you. Why I volunteer. It's not for money. It's, it's not, I'm sorry, I missed that. It's not for fame. It's not for any personal gain. It's just for love of fellow man. It's just to lend a helping hand. Something you cannot buy with wealth. It's not for medals, one with pride. It's for that feeling deep inside. It's that reward down in your heart. It's feeling that you've been a part of helping others far and near. That makes me be a volunteer. So again, when we look at our Philippine Cultural Center, the dream that became a reality, every brick, every pebble, every morsel of paint, every drop of water, everything that comprises the physical space, in my opinion, is only a representation of the thousands of people who contributed to millions of volunteer hours, commitment, sacrifice, perseverance. So when we talk about activism, I'm so grateful for this opportunity that you all have given us to share this dream. And again, source of information are from the Jade Anniversary, from the, our Aming Utang na Loob Souvenir Program, our second generation legacy group help host, a book that was published by Mario Gutierrez Gamboa, and then again, countless conversations with those of you who were there. And again, I emphasize the importance that now's the time and appreciate this opportunity to launch this effort because we need to capture more of your stories since they contribute to our collective story. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Sin. What a, what a presentation. Wow. What a presentation. Hey. And uh, I would like to say that uh, coming from Seattle, a lot of my Seattle folks, a lot of people on the West Coast wanted to know why I chose Virginia Beach. Right there. It's the heart and soul of, of the community. They're for real. We're for real. So thank you, Sin. That was a an, an amazing presentation. But you left one thing out. What's that? One of the, one of the biggest reasons why I came here was the food. <laughs> you have the best cooks, 
they're all ex Navy chefs. And I challenge any community out there to challenge that food that comes out of this area because we are championship chefs. With that said, Mr. Abyssal, Ray Abyssal, are you still there? Do you have anything to say, Ray? No, so one of the things that I, you know, as I was watching since presentation, number one, like it, it, especially in the very end, I really felt her passion in her voice and also her introspection in terms of what's happening with the community, not only for what happened in the past, but really for me, and the reason why we're doing this in the first place is really for the future. Probably the youngest person on the Zoom is probably 45 years old. I just turned 50, okay? So the whole idea of what are we gonna do as a community beyond this is getting the younger folks involved. And what I mean by younger people, I mean people who are 40 years old, which is not even really that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, we need to find a way to continue the stories and not only to continue them, but to share what Sin just so graciously, graciously shared with us, right? So the collective memories that we have, um, they're beautiful ones. And in order for us to kind of move on, like for our youth, when I mean youth, I mean people who are in their 30s, you know, just to be part of our discussion, right? And that has been the biggest challenge with not only Fonz National, but here locally, is getting people in their 30s and 20s and 40s. And, you know, the second generation involved. And I think if anyone saw Sin's presentation, who was part of those generations, okay, will absolutely be able to yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and I, I would, um, I, I think my dad wants to say something. We're actually in different rooms. Okay, uh, but it, <laughs> sorry, Uncle. I, I want to <laughs> emphasize, right. you guys, I want to emphasize that there are, you know, a, again, so many businesses, so many perspectives that need to be shared. And again, your expertise as, as funds can guide us to be able to do that strategically and in a timely fashion. So again, I know, I know I'm, I'm, I, you know, I didn't get a chance to say everybody's name. That would take us three hours. But but please know, please know, I, I say that humbly and respectfully to say there are so many other stories that we have yet to tell. So if I may have my dad say something. Yeah, how can I do it? You, you're, you're there, okay, Daddy. Cool. Just go and say something. <laughs> go and say something, daddy -o. No, no, you turned it off. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> now can I say something? Yes, yes. Yeah, you okay. Can. can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah, Go and ahead, that is the that's the second uh, intention that why uh, we work together for this QPOT, you know? It is for the second generation. We the founder of this uh, QPOT is getting old. Getting going back to where we start for, you know. So we need the youth. We need the teenagers. We need them help to survive on this cultural center. We are getting old, all of us. And I, I don't want to say my name, my age. It's your birthday I'm today. One, I'm oh, one of the founders of this organization. <laughs> and that's why we are uh, hoping for the second generation to come forward. And I'm glad that my daughter is in. She is part of the second generation. And as part of that, uh, we got this when we formed this QPOT. It is for the senior citizen, for the middle, and especially for the youth. And who will get the torch to get this QPOT light burning all the time? Don't let it get burn out. Stay on. For we, have, we work hard for this. Thank you for calling. Uh, thank you for listening, and that's all. <laughs> we need the teenagers. <laughs> we need the youth to come forward to help out. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Daddyo. Did may I say something? Alan. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to add to what um, Uncle Chris said, it's not just for the second generation. This is for the third, the fourth, and the fifth generation. You're right. I just have to say. What an impact it has made, not on just mine and Sin's generation who were part of all those dance troops. My son, my younger son, who's applying for college and he's writing his applications 
in the room next door to me. The main essay he's writing for his college application is all about growing up at the Philippine Cultural Center of Virginia. It is one of the most moving things my child has ever produced. And I just have to thank all the aunties and uncles and all my parents and everyone who was involved in this effort because that is a kind of impact we're making on our future generations that hopefully we pass on the love that we have for each other and our heritage and that they realize the impact we are making on their lives and the history of Hampton Roads and beyond. Um, but just to let you all know that it is working and unprompted, this means so much to me that my son will take this piece of his life with him for the rest of his life. So thank you all. It is with much gratitude that when I'm gone and you all are gone, you can be assured that our Filipino American community will go on. So thank you all. So um, thank you so much, Arlene and uncle. Happy birthday, uncle. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Happy and, birthday, uncle. And, yeah. and Ninang Chirito's birthday too. Oh my God! Uh, oh, yeah, happy birthday, Nina! Happy birthday! Right. Happy birthday. No, no, no mention of the years. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. My that's right. My dad just turned eighty-one, so he says he's eighteen. So <laughs> just, just I, reverse I'm it, uncle. Then. <laughs> yeah, just reverse it. So that's that's what my dad does. He just reverses the years now. So ha happy birthday, uncle. Hopefully, you'll get uh, oh, some thank uh, you. really good fun set. So I'm opening up the uh, the conversation for any more comments or questions for the uncles and aunties who we are blessed to have on the screen here, or even for Sin, or, who is really I mean, doing a really great job. Does yes. anyone want to say anything? Yes, I do. All okay, right. Edwina, thank you. Um, you know, as a trustee member um, in the National Historical Society, that means that we have relationship with stories across the country. I just want to say that being a member of this community for 37 years, and I've been to many functions, this is the first then, and thank you for this awesome presentation, that I've seen everything in one hour, you know, and we need to know our roots in order for us to capture the essence of what it means to be Filipino American, which is the sacrifice, which is not the money, but the fact that we are making positive changes. And I look forward to telling the story of Kufat and the future and beyond as to how we capture this. Because let me tell you, the young people are looking. They're looking to capture to something, but it's up to us to tell them that whatever you're going through in life, our ancestors before you have, and we need their talent in our community. And it is my commitment as a trustee and member of this organization that we're gonna think of ways to bring in the next generation and to share their story and share their talents with our community. I think it's time that we start connecting that bridge. I just wanted to say that. And this, this, this presenta presentation was very moving to me. I mean, I even cried too, because I can feel your passion and pain, but I'm here with you, okay? Thank you. Thank again, you. Again, we cannot thank you enough for this opportunity. And, and please know, this was only a single snapshot. There are so many, 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 many other things. We, we could have spent a webinar on just one topic. Yes. We could send a webinar on one person. And I personally would love to do that, to have a webinar on each of the chairmen, each of the people, each of the pageants. I mean, there is so much that can reflect the depth that I couldn't even begin to touch. Right. Yeah, I'd like to add as like, one of the former youths that was involved in, uh, you know, with the with the uh, Filipino community when I was a teenager, you know, being part of the UIAT dance troupe and various other things, you know, just me, you know, initially being forced <laughs> to to be part of the Filipino community, and then I eventually, you know, made a bunch of friends and connections, and then I became a part of Fonz. And even though I live in North Virginia. You know, I like to keep in touch with the community because, 
you know, I, I would love to move back to Virginia Beach. You know, even though, you know, Northern Virginia is okay, I still enjoy being back home. Um, even though, like, my parents moved away and stuff like that, I just love, you know, Virginia Beach is where my heart is. And I really enjoy the com being around the community there and just, you know, just being back home. It, there, there's nothing like Virginia Beach to me. So I really enjoy, you know, all the connections and the, and the friends in the community that I've made. And it, it's really nice to hear, like, you know, where the beginnings of this community started, you know, before I was born. And just to see it grow into this large concentrated community of Filipinos in Virginia Beach. So it's really humbling to be involved, you know, in such a small manner with everything that's gone on um, with this community. So, you know, thank you to all the aunties and uncles that have laid the foundation for us kids to grow up and also pass down our knowledge to the future generations. And hopefully, you know, we could build a, an even stronger community um, so that this could live on. Thanks, Dan. And, and I will say, even in this world of virtual uh, interactions, I think as we plan future re-engagement activities and Vivian is leading, Vivian Gentos Hippel is leading a lot of our re-engagement activities, we're looking at strategies to host virtual engagement. So uh, again, even though you're, you're physically in Northern Virginia, we're hoping that we can connect with you virtually as well. Can yeah, I, I, there, there, there's actually like an interesting community project that I'd like to introduce um, would be, you know, something simple um, that we could have like the youth and also the older generations involved, which would talk about the, the history of the Philippine American community of Hampton Roads through pictures, you know, have like a virtual scrapbook of how our community has grown through the eyes of our community. Mm -hmm. And it's, it, and it's a very, simple way to have our kids talk with their lolos and lolas about hey so what was it like when you were younger and mm -hmm. through a picture you know because everyone's taking pictures and we have like a whole bunch of photo books at home hey let's tell a story about hey what was it like in the mm -hmm. in Norfolk where you guys lived you know how was the community over there how about when you moved to Virginia Beach oh there's Baymar oh wow little Manila <laughs> how that grew up you know so it's I think that it's a nice community engagement that we could try to do um, in the community where we could develop some sort of tangible object like a mm -hmm. Hampton Roads Filipino community photo book of the history of the Filipino American community um, of Hampton Absolutely. Roads. So I, I think it would be in like a nice project to pursue. Yes. Um, it's, it's just kind of like something that, that I kind of like threw out and Thank maybe you. it's something that we could have community involvement with the youth and the elders and also to bring them together, okay. you know, to have that dialogue because that is something that we really <laughs> need to preserve our yes. history because our older generation you know they're slowly fading away and we really need to capture their those memories now Agreed. that they're fresh still Agreed. so thank you right yep. great idea 100 yes. percent. i think uh i think vivian wanted to mention yeah. something vivian uh your floor uh i first wanted just to say thank you so much to all of you to sin to qfot to fonds for everything that they've done today in presenting so clearly the history of the PCC. I wanted to say, it's interesting just to note with what Dan had mentioned, I think we're all on the same frequency. He mentioned a photo book. I had heard that from both Sin and Arlene um, and other members as well as Fonz. So I think we're all on that same wavelength of, of really trying to preserve the Filipino American culture and that heritage. Um, the presentation really reverberated that common goal of keeping our cultural heritage intact. And in doing so, it really requires us to all work together. And I think we all feel that, especially during the pandemic. Um, looking back at all these pictures I'm brought back there. so many memories, um, but also it, it just hit the heart of all the passion and the commitment of my parents and aunties and uncles and friends who've really all contributed um, purely not just by what they did, but 
by their examples of character and who they are as people. And I think from their seeds, now with the second generation, their example has given us the character and the ethics to really help lead today. So thank you. That's good. Thanks, Viv. That's it. Thank you, Vivian. So uh, I'm opening it up. It's now 3.52. We started at 2.30. So we're going at an uh, hour and a half of a rainy Sunday with this really great presentation. Are there any more comments or questions that anyone wants to, uh, to, uh, to talk about? Uh, I think Tracy, your hand's up. Tracy, go ahead. Just walk 